Um, so I got contacted two days before the conference by a certain individual who will remain nameless. Um, but, there, but her name rhymes with Eileen. Um, and she basically told me, help, it's an emergency. I need you to take my speech slot. And I said, no, I don't want to very strongly because it's my only vacation and I want to just relax. And she's like, no, but I really need you to. And she started crying and it was a big dramatic thing. Um, <laughs> anyways, so I said yes eventually. And then, uh, and then she, by the end of the conversation, she's like, so what's your topic? And I said, well, you just told me two minutes ago I was giving a speech, so I don't really have one yet. <laughs> and, and then she's like, okay, so we'll just put you down for submission. And I said, okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, uh, come to find out I get the 30 minute time slot. <laughs> so uh, should be interesting what happens next. Uh, okay, yeah, so <laughs> here we go. Um, so my topic is, is not on submission. Uh, I mean, it's part of submission, but a very important part that I think is, is definitely worth talking about, uh, verification. Um, so I personally have a personal like weakness with verification, um, and I, I want to tell you guys a little bit a story about uh, how this kind of came to my attention. So um, I work for a submitter. His name is Kareem. He gave a speech. It was about a uh, art of um, reconciliation. Um, it was a good speech, uh, and so I, I work in healthcare AI. I'm a software developer. Um, and we were hiring a new manager for my division, kind of like my, my team. And he was coming in and he was, uh, we were onboarding him and his job was to give Kareem feedback on some of the employees. So he had to give feedback about me. Um, so he kind of works us, with us for a while and he writes down his feedback, he sends it to Kareem. And then Kareem loves to bug me at work, so he comes to me, he's like, hey, I know what he says is about you. He's saying a lot of bad things about you, and you don't know what it is, and I know what it is, and he loves to annoy me. So, um, so I'm, I want to know what he thinks about me, because he's going to be my boss, right? So I say, oh, okay, so what did he say? Um, so he says, so Kareem says, uh, he says you're a really hard worker and you're competent. So at this point, I'm like, wow, mashallah, I... I tricked the guy into thinking that I'm hardworking and competent. Um, and, and I was thinking, like, this is great. He's gonna, this is going to go OK. And uh, the next thing he says is, but he mentioned that sometimes you say things, and you say things in such a way where you're, you come off so confident that um, he believes you. And then later on, he finds out it wasn't really true. Um, and. At that point, I was kind of kind of sunk. Like my heart, my stomach kind of sunk. I was like, "Oh no, this is bad." He <laughs> he thinks I'm like a liar or something. Like I, I lie about my work or something like that, which is not the case. To be clear, I I don't lie about my work. What happens is is I just don't verify the information that I pass on. Right? Sometimes I get information from somebody else or something else, and I just pass it on without thinking about it. Like, for instance, he's like, did you run that program yesterday? And I say, yeah, I ran it. It should be done today, right? But I didn't even check. And I just assumed it was finished, right? So that, that's the kind of thing that happens. So a lot of the times, it gives them a false expectation, right? So this is when I realized I had this weakness. Uh, I, I have a weakness of not really looking through all of the evidence to make sure that what I'm saying is 100% true. How do I switch slides here? OK, here we go. So you guys know this verse. Crucial advice. You shall not accept any information unless you verify it for yourself. I have given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and you are responsible for using them. You shall not walk proudly on earth. You cannot bore through the earth, nor can you be as tall as the mountains. All bad behavior is condemned by your Lord. So um, right now we live in an information age. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this on CNN. Uh, it was kind of like an infamous moment when Donald Trump pointed at one of the reporters, like, you're fake news, and uh, it caused a really big stink in, in the news media. I know some of you are from the UK, but this is really relevant to the, the US people. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so that happened, and, and it caused a big stir, is because they were saying, well, how, how can you uh, legitimize one source over another, right? And it's actually a very good question, it's because a lot of the information that's on the internet, I mean to be specific, is 
a little bit iffy. How, can, how do you know one way or another whether something is right or wrong? How can you come to a conclusion as to whether or not what you're reading or seeing is really what the truth is, right? Um, and it's a very important question. It's because we're bombarded with information every day, right? We live in an age where information is so readily available and everybody is so connected, right, that anybody can say anything and how do you legitimize whether one person is saying something true versus something false, right? So this is kind of the issue we run into every day. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, there's these fun games online where it's like spot the fake news headlines. So um, there are three news line headlines here. One of them is fake, okay? Two of them are real. So I want you to internally choose one in your mind, okay, be honest. Which one do you think is fake? Okay, don't yell it out loud. One, two, three, the top one is one, bottom one is three, okay? I'll give you a second. Okay, so let me show you the correct answer. Okay, so the third one is the fake one. Now why? I couldn't tell you why. All of them are ridiculous, right? <laughs> All of them are so weird that it's like, it's really hard to know whether one is fake and whether one is real. So what I'm trying to say is it's not always so apparent. Like, we have a certain amount of logical judgment, right? But that can only take us so far. When things become so surreal or so ridiculous that you cannot distinguish one thing from another, how can you say one is true and one is false, right? The only way to really do it is to provide evidence. Only through evidence and logic can we come to the correct conclusion. So I, I took the liberty of Googling these things. These, these actually are real headlines. They weren't joking. Um, the first one is talking about fat shaming Godzilla, and then the other one is talking about um, some guy who collects stuffed animals, which is really weird. But anyways, moving on. Um, so some things are not so clear, right? But that doesn't mean that there isn't information out there that is so obviously wrong and yet people still believe it, right? It doesn't really matter. There's a huge spectrum of what seems like truth and is not necessarily truth. And what is so obviously not truth, but people still believe it so heavily. So I'm going to show you an example. So this is the, the flat earth theory. Um, there's a huge movement going on right now where people believe there is a flat earth, right? And uh, why, you ask? Well. I don't know why, but <laughs> to, to put it simply, um, there is this lie, right? There is this lie that there is a flat earth. And a lot of things don't work with a flat earth, like gravity doesn't work with a flat earth, the sun eclipses don't work with a flat earth, the moon tides don't work with a flat earth. And yet, there is such a huge movement behind this that this one initial lie, which is so obviously wrong, has spawned multiple smaller lies which kind of legitimize this one big lie. And I'll give you an example. So, so they say, so gravity doesn't work with a flat Earth, right? Um, you need a round globe for gravity to work the same way that, for me to be standing here, the Earth needs to be round and orbiting the sun, right? So they, they say, they say I, no, those two things are false, right? So what they say is, the Earth is actually flat, but we're flying through space at a very high speed. So it's kind of like we're moving so fast that it emulates gravity. So you see, like, one lie leads to another lie, and this lie is, like, loosely based off science, but it's believable enough for somebody who doesn't know anything about this topic to say that could actually be true, right? So it's ignorance to a certain degree that leads us to believe these things. Only evidence is the way to distinguish what is truth from what is false. Um, so, I mean, obviously, this is very clearly debunked by the Quran, right? Uh, 79, 27 through 30 says, Are you more difficult to create than the heavens? He constructed it. He raised its masses and perfected it. He made its night dark and brightened its morn. He made the earth egg-shaped. So it's so clear. It's, it, there's no ambiguity to this, right? The Quran is absolutely 100% clear on the earth is egg-shaped. And yet, you, you have like all these weird theories 
about like, wh wh what is going on here? There's a cubed earth, right? And this is like a joke, okay, to be clear, but this is gonna be real in a few years. Somebody's gonna believe this. Somebody's gonna believe there's a cubed earth, right? And it just keeps, the lies keep growing to a degree where it gets ridiculous, but everything is so ridiculous that you cannot distinguish from one from the other. So how does this apply to us, submission, right? This, th this, this concept of all of this fake information out there and us having to verify this information in order to gain, what, uh, to gain the truth as opposed to falsehood. Um, so oftentimes I find myself in a situation where I need to verify information that I've heard secondhand from somebody, right? And this happens a lot, especially when it's between a submitter and another submitter, or they're telling me about another community, or they're telling me about an individual, and they're saying, this person believes this way, or this community believes this way, or I heard this person did this thing, right? So our responsibility is pretty clear in this situation. Um, if we look back at the verse, uh, 1736, I'll read it again. You shall not accept any information unless you verify it for yourself. Any information, right? So if you hear something, it is your responsibility to go to the source and verify it, right? Um, especially if it's about another individual or a community. Uh, and this is kind of the devil's tool. The devil's tool is to spread rumors and to drive wedges between individuals with these rumors, right? Beware of the devil's rumors. When a rumor that affects security comes their way, they spread it. Had they referred it to the messenger and those in charge among them, those who understand these matters would have informed them. If it were not for God's grace towards you and his mercy, you would have followed the devil except a few. You shall fight for the cause of God. You are responsible only for your own soul and exhort the believers to do the same. God will neutralize the power of those who disbelieve. God is much more powerful and much more effective. So it's very clear with these verses that the devil uses misinformation and rumors in order to cause divides between people, right? And the more we're connected, the more responsibility we have to verify. It's because it's easier for us to verify, and it's also easier, easier for us to get misinformed, because you might be connected to somebody who's trying to misinform you, or you might, and you can also be connected to the source as well. So if you hear something about me from somebody else, you could just send me an email, right? So whenever you sign up for a new account, right, they send you an email verification. Verify your email. Verify your identity, right? That same concept applies to us. Like, we should always be striving to verify whoever we come into contact with, right? Verify the information they're telling you. And make sure that their sources are legitimate. So this is what ends up happening. It's a game of telephone, right? One person tells the other person one thing. They tell the other person another thing. Soon it, soon it gets ridiculous, right? Soon it gets totally out of hand, and it becomes total falsehood, right? One, like, there could be truth in the beginning when somebody tells some, somebody something else, and it gets twisted over time. So that's why it's your job to go back to the original person or the subject of the matter and decide for yourself what is true and false. Because ultimately, we are, to a very strong degree, um, our ideas come from our bias, our personal Understanding. This is what we're trying to overcome, right? It's our personal opinions that got us to this place. So only through verification and looking at all the evidence and making sure that it's correct can we overcome that initial deficiency that got us here. So this is another big part of it. Um, not only do you have to verify information, but you cannot even give information that you hear from another, any sort of legitimacy until you verify it. Suspicion is sinful. Oh, you who believe you shall avoid any suspicion, for even a little bit of suspicion is sinful. You shall not spy on one another, nor shall you backbite one another. 
This is as abominable as eating the flesh of your dead brother. You certainly abhor this. You shall observe God. God is Redeemer most merciful. So everybody knows this verse. It's like a visceral, the language is visceral. Like you can, it's really strong, right? And there's a reason it's so strong. It's because God knows that this is one of the devil's tools to break up communities and to divide the believers, right? So ultimately, by combating the devil through evidence and verification, we are keeping our community together, and we're fighting for the truth, right? So like I said before, right, uh, suspicion oftentimes comes from yourself. It doesn't come from somebody else. You might have a thought that you think is one way, you think somebody is one way, or you think something is one way, and you give it legitimacy in your mind. This is also wrong. Even if the source is yourself, you have to hold yourself to account, just as much as you hold other people to account, right? So if somebody comes to you with information, you have to verify that information. But if you're coming up with stuff yourself, you have to think to yourself, is where I'm coming from, is why I'm thinking this thing, is it coming from somewhere that is legitimate, right? And, and when I'm talking legitimate, clearly I'm talking about the Quran, right? I'm talking about sources that God has given us. The Quran is the ultimate reference. When it comes to our life, our beliefs, we should always be checking our beliefs and our opinions with the Quran to make sure they're in line. Right? That is verifying against yourself. Okay. So the next one is? So there's another aspect to this. And it's when you give information, right, when, you give, when you're talking to somebody about something, and they're like, wait, I need to verify this information first. It's easy to get offended. It's easy to get offended and say, what, I'm not a truthful person? Like, you, you don't think that what I'm telling you comes from a good source? But you have to understand that it's everybody's individual job to do this for themselves, right? It's their individual responsibility. Because ultimately, we are responsible for our own soul, and verification is Aim, that verse is aimed at the individual. It's saying any information you receive, right, as an individual, you should go out and verify for yourself. So even if it's from somebody you trust, right, I think it's worth going the extra mile to make sure that what you're hearing from somebody is the truth, is what's right, okay? Um, and this is, a, this, is some, this is a problem I've been seeing over time. It's been getting... I think worse and worse as, as time has gone on. And I think that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to hear that I, I, I was talking to some submitters here, um, and they're coming from other communities and trying to verify some information that they heard, right, about us, or, or uh, not about, about my community, right? Um, and I think that's, uh, that's great. And, and, and I think that we should take that example and really take it to hardest, because that's something that I hope I can strive to be at one day, right? Where, where I would go out of my way to the point where I would travel somewhere to say, hey, is this right or wrong, right? I think that's a really great example, and, and, and I think that, mashallah, to those people who did that, uh, subhanAllah, that's a really um, great striving that you're doing. So um, thank you for that, and thanks for listening to my speech. Uh, thanks a lot. Hello? Okay. We'll take some questions. Uh, wow, there are lots of questions. Okay, we'll start with you. Hit me. I'm ready. Thank you, Ashkan. That was, that was great and a good reminder, mashallah. Um, so my question is, how do you um, reconcile 49.6, which says, investigate rumors before believing them? Oh, you believe if a wicked person brings any news to you, you shall first investigate, lest you commit injustice towards some people. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile that with, I mean, are we supposed to verify anything or just what a wicked person brings us? Well, that's a good question. And I think that's definitely something worth discussing. But again, I think that it's on all of us to do it individually. And, and the reason I say that is because Ultimately, when uh, information travels across multiple people, um, it changes, right? 
So you have to really analyze the source that you're coming. If the, if, the, if the source is coming from somebody you trust, and you know that they um, are coming from a good source, and they can prove what they're saying, then you have no reason to verify it, right? It's because they've already verified it for you. But if they're just saying something out of nowhere, it doesn't matter who they are. I think you should go out and verify it for yourself. And I think that's the distinction. And I would like to think that a believer who is passing on any information to somebody knows that it's the individual's responsibility to verify and will provide the evidence to go along with it. That's what I would say to that. Question. Thank you. Um, amazing. Thank you. Ashkand. Awesome. Um, I was actually, the whole time you were giving your, your speech, I was thinking about the speech that was given on innovation. And, um, and it reminded me that uh, at verification at its basic, at its core, for, for everybody that's here, um, is, is we have to constantly verify, um, are we following the right path? Is this the truth? Um, you know, especially for, for those that are here that are hearing a lot of things and seeing um, a lot of, uh, you know, disarray and arguing between uh, believers and so-called submitters. Um, you know, the, the devil doesn't, the devil isn't going to use traditional Islam or Christianity or Catholicism for us to, to try to confuse us on what the right path is. That's, that's an old trick. It's done. It's over. Um, now he's going to create confusion between what is a submitter, what is a true believer, mm. right? So now you have all this uh, division and, and, um, and, and different sects of submission, and it's happening now. It's actually been happening for a while. And so my, my question to you is, um, the verification of information when it comes into you, um, how do you reconcile that with not just verifying the right information, but making sure that you actually, you care to verify the information, right? Mm -hmm. So um, verifying there is one God, that's easy, yeah, right? But, but a lot of the things that we're hearing online is, oh, Perfect happiness isn't a fundamental of the religion. We're not saying perfect happiness doesn't exist, but you, you seem to think that perfect happiness is required, uh, you know, the correct understanding is required to call yourself a believer, mm. whereas this is just kind of extra information on the side, right? So you have that verification of the information, but you also need to understand uh, how important is that information and does it then become an innovation if you, don't, if you don't treat it correctly? How do you reconcile those two so that you're verifying, but you're also doing it in a manner that you're then taking the correct action once you verify it? I got what you're saying. Okay, so that's a very good question. Um, what I would say to that is, every in, I would like to think submitters are naturally inquisitive in the sense where they want to find what is true and what is false, right? Um, and apathy is condemned, right? So we cannot just sit back and say, I've heard this information. Um, I'm just going to sit on it, think about it, not really do anything about it, kind of just like mull on it for a while, right? I think that when we receive new information about submission, about our, about our practices, it really becomes important for us to come to a clear decision on what we think and what we don't think. The reason is, is because the religion ultimately has to have standards. It can't come to a point where, some, where somebody, where we all believe our own individual way, right? That's not the way religion works, and that's not the way that God's system works. Um, God has a set of laws, right? And that's not decided by each individual. That's decided by God. So we need to come and strive to get to that point, and I think that as long as we're not apathetic and we're being inquisitive, we will, inshallah, get to that point, right? And I hope that answers part of your question. I don't know if it answers the whole thing. Okay, great. Um, Ashkan, a yeah. great speech on verification. Uh, we know how dangerous conjecture and hearsay can be. Yes. Um, but uh, I wanted to hear your thoughts about when would you consider testimony of somebody valid uh, or something that's considered verifying and when it's not? Mm. The testimony just of someone bearing witness to something. Or, so yeah. I would be extra careful um, when it comes to somebody 
bearing witness of something without providing any sort of evidence to support that claim. It's because, and, and I give the example of a lot of things I hear, I've heard over time, I've, I've been a submitter for a little while, I've heard a lot of people say, I heard the messenger do this, I saw the messenger do this, and I need to be able to verify something like that in order to say 100% that that is in fact what happened, and that is something that I can potentially take an example from, or or question whether or not it falls in line with the messenger's teachings, right? So when it comes to simple hearsay and saying like, I heard somebody say this, or I heard somebody say that, I think we need to be extra careful and really analyze whether or not that's coming from a place we trust or not. Um, and I would be hesitant to draw any big conclusions off of something like that. That's what I'd say. Anybody else? Um. Okay, I think we have about two more questions, and then we'll move along. Thank you. I just want to respond to um, my understanding about investigate um, information also about what Aaron John said and Rod is that we hear a lot of information, for example, in TV about news. Mm. You're not responsible to verify those. You know why? Because any information that we uh, hold in, in us and it's going to be part of our record, and we are responsible for that, we better check and right. investigate, okay? Right. So if a wicked person brings any news, and we recognize that that person is the wicked, they're not going to bring anything good for us. And if I hear it, okay, it's going to be, if I don't do anything about it, it's going to be part of my, um, you know, a statement that I received, it's information that I kept it inside, and I'm going to be responsible. So I better investigate. Yeah. So um, in 1736, God says the crucial advice is that any information that you receive, you, um, in the, you know, I have given you the hearing eyesight brain, mm -hmm. is that we are, if we are keeping that information for ourselves, and we are holding to that. So it is our job. So it goes back to the testimony thing, uh, question that Rod has. I would do, I would ask. It doesn't mean that we don't trust, but for our own good, we should do that. Verify. Mm. Are you finished? Sorry. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That's, that's a good point. Um, I'm not trying to say, and I want to make a distinction, I'm not trying to say um, anything you hear on the TV or anything like that, you have to go and do the due diligence and go into every single um, right or wrong as to whether what that is, right? I'm talking about something that you hold as a belief and you truly like is part of uh, what you believe as a person, right? Those are the things that we really need to come to a conclusion on and have factual evidence as to why we believe those things. Uh, it's more than just, I heard somebody say something one time, right? It's, it's, it's a little bit more important topics than just that. That's, that's what I say. Um, hey, Ashkan. Um, <laughs> you again. <laughs> <laughs> Go okay. on. <laughs> okay, first of all, first of all, just a correction, I did not cry. Um, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I made that up. Just to be clear, I made that up. Second of all, um, thanks for, mashallah, taking over my spot. Um, <laughs> I had a great vacation. Um, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. But um, I, I think that some people don't want to verify because there's a great responsibility attached to it. Mm. Um, because once they hear some information, uh, you know, obviously you can't just, uh, you can't just sit with that information. You have to make a judgment call, right? Mm. So um, what do you say to people or what sort of advice can you offer to people who um, are at that point where they, you know, they don't want to verify because they're scared about like what they have to do, or like they're feeling lazy or apathetic about it. Like how how should they go about the situation? Like what? How do? How should they? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not notorious for being somebody who's very like tactful in the way they speak or nice, uh, but I'm gonna try my best to like come with a <laughs> like kind answer to that. Uh, uh, or I'm just gonna be straightforward with the way I think. I the way I would say it is. Apathy is condemned, right? And, and I mentioned that before, and it's very important. It's because you can't just sit and expect to make it, right? It, it's it's going to be work. I mean, we made a pretty big mistake. 
we made a big mistake when we said uh, there could be another God beside God, astaghfirullah, right? Um, and there's a lot of, there's work that has to come with reversing that mistake, okay? So you really need to figure out where you stand. And it's not a joke. It's, it's, it's going to take time and it's going to take effort and you really have to think about it. And you really have to take the due diligence to figure out where you stand on these issues and why you stand where you stand, right? So I would tell those people, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put you in a position where, where it might, uh, eventually you're going to have to figure it out. God's not going to allow you to never make a decision until you, the, the day you die, right? That's not how it works. You have to be tested. So you're going to have to come to a conclusion at some point. That's what I would say to them. Better soon, better soon than later, right? So Go ahead. What, do you think like about this, what do you think about this scenario? Um, I'm giving you an example. Yeah. Uh, I'm a submitter, let's say, for 20 years, and everybody knows me as a truthful person. Okay. And I'm going to come and tell you that uh, I know this person that who lives here or there, whatever, as a submitter, he's an enemy of God, or he's a disbeliever, or he's a hypocrite, for instance. Mm -hmm. Do you believe me or not? And I have, uh, and I tell you why, and I, I don't bring a long list of evidences. I say, hey, I tell you this, go verify. You know, do you believe me J just right off the bat? No, Thank I don't. Uh, there has to be evidence to support it. it can't, it's because... Should I, should, I, should, I, should, I, should I bring evidences if I make such a claim? Yes, absolutely. And th I'll tell you why. It's because in, in, when I originally told the, sto the, the first story, right, I wasn't intentionally lying, right? I, I, I wasn't trying to conceal the truth. I wasn't being a liar. I just didn't do the due diligence of making sure 100% that was the case. The only way I could do that is if I, provided, if I found evidence to support it, right? So no matter how truthful, truthful the person is, they, they might think that is the truth 100%, right, in their mind. But how can you convince me that that's the truth? That's what I'm, that's what I'm worried about, right? It's because I'm accountable. I'm accountable just as much as that person is. So for myself, as an individual, I want to make sure. That's what I would say. Um, Ashkan, over here, buddy. Where? Right here. Straight. Straight. Too many people. Straight ahead. OK, hi. <laughs> hey. um, I, and I'm not, I want to make a, a statement. I'm not saying that you said anything to the contrary of this, right. but I think it's important to clarify Go this. Ahead. Um, because you talked about um, somebody bringing news to you, uh, like a like in the context of forty nine six, and then you also talked about seventeen uh, thirty six, and you talked about people attributing things to the messenger of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to make I just want to make it clear that a according to the Quran, uh, there's different criterion for different types of news, right? So in forty nine six. It's talking about a, a wicked person bringing you news. It's general. It's talking about something that happened, right? Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily attributing something to God and the religion. Right. Um, there are other requirements when it comes to matters of religion. Uh, God tells us, for example, that the Quran must be the only source of religious law. So it's not enough for somebody to come and say, I bear witness that I heard the messenger say this or that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we can't look at these in isolation and say, oh, it's the same when we're talking about, hey, what happened in some political meeting versus somebody coming and saying, hey, I heard the messenger of God say this about the religion. Yes. Um, uh, the other thing is that um, God authorized his messenger and told us directly in the Quran that he's to be obeyed and trusted. But he didn't say that about somebody who was in his presence 30 years ago and heard him say something. Right. So there's a difference between, you know, having a, uh, an audio or a video that was distributed by the messenger of God for, purpose, for the purpose of explaining uh, matters of religion versus like secondhand information that is being attributed to him that's not verifiable. So I think uh, I just want to clarify, and, I, and, I, and maybe you can comment on that and tell yeah. me if you agree with that or not. Yeah, absolutely. But when it comes to matters of religion, it's not just 1736. It's also Quran must be the only source of religious law. Yes, absolutely true. And, and to, to add on to that, the messenger in, in the audios and videos, right, he uses Quran as the source. He's not coming from a different direction, right? So clearly 
by listening, and the Quran also says that, like you mentioned, the messenger is speaking the truth. So just by that alone, right, we can take that and say what he's saying is coming from the correct place. That's the way I see it. Anybody else? It's a lot of questions. L last, last question. No, we can have more. I'll be up here all day, I guess. <laughs> Go on. Uh, I have a question in light of what Firuzajan uh, was saying is that yeah. if in your community somebody who's known to bring news, not necessarily verifiable, to you about another submitter that they did some unrighteous acts towards her, towards others, and uh, you may not necessarily, you don't really believe that person, but uh, you may not necessarily want to verify. I just want to see if it's correct because you don't want to um, cause animosity towards you know the people in the community would you now will you be responsible for not bringing that out and verify the news or uh, is it okay to just let it go and don't re really believe that person can you, can you, you repeat the first part of your question i didn't quite so catch if that. a person in your community yeah. uh, bring a news or say this person did this type of act yeah. unrighteous acts you know towards yeah. that individual and other individuals and uh, you don't necessarily do you have to go verify it even though you don't believe that person, you don't think that individual actually did these things, and they may have the wrong ideas or understanding, or would you have to verify it? Because the reason you would not want to verify it because you don't want to cause animosity towards in, within your community. But do you still need to go and verify and say whether this action actually happened or not? What do you say to that? Okay, so that's, that's an important question. And what I would say to that is, even if you don't believe it, Right? If something like that, an accusation against another person that is negative, right? I still think it's important that you take the time to look into it. The reason I say that is because if, if everybody acted the same way, they just didn't believe it and it just went on, eventually it'll get to somebody who does believe it. And if there isn't a strong voice against that, then that person is more inclined to have those thoughts and give them legitimacy. So you can be the individual who says, wait, I looked into it, and I know for sure that's not true. And you can go back to the person and say, look, that's not true. You should definitely look into it more. And I don't think you should say that anymore, right? Because it does fall on you to, to a certain degree to look into it. That's what I would say. And, and I think that ultimately, um, if I were in your position, I would feel like I would be held to account to that. That's, that's what I think. All right, thank you.